2016 has been an amazing year for Hi-Res Studios. Smite's had one of its strongest years ever, and we just recently took Paladins into open beta. And now we want to show you guys something new that we've been working on. We're huge fans here at the studio of tactical games, of turn-based games, something we've wanted to do for a very long time. And it's very exciting to be able to make a game in that genre in the Smite universe. Smite Tactics all started off as a paper prototype. They started making like basically a board game and just playing around with that, and I saw it. I was like instantly hooked and interested. After the initial PC playtest, everyone realized how awesome the game was, and we decided to move forward with it. There's a wide variety of cards in Smite Tactics. We wanted to make sure that everyone was building synergies based on gods and minions. We really felt that they really captured the life of Smite. But somewhere to Smite, the real stars of the show are the gods. Each god in Smite Tactics has a unique active ability that goes on a turn-based cooldown when used. These abilities not only capture the spirit of the god in Smite itself, but also allow the player more control on the game. So the coolest things we get to do is put more effort into attack animations and ability animations. In Smite, we are very strict on the timings for all the animations. So in this, it's not just quick swipes, it's actually big, long attacks. Not only the god characters, we got to do a lot of the creeps and the minions, because you summon them in, you control them, and they are important in this game. We've gained a lot of experience from developing Smite for multiple platforms. And so with Tactics, we're definitely building it from a ground up to be an amazing experience with either a keyboard or a controller. I like Tactics a lot because it's mainly positioning, not just the card you draw, so I enjoy that a lot. It's actually going to be great for playing in between rank queues, plus it'll be fun for those of you that stream and do YouTube content to always be playing a game for your stream. This is a project that has been very near and dear to me, and I can't wait to see you guys play it because we have put a lot of work into it. It's a game that I'm really passionate about. I'm hoping that people really enjoy it. We're going to be starting closed testing towards the end of the year, and we can't wait for you guys to see more of the game. Build defenses around the power collector. It was never that smart to charge cavalry frontally into a spear unit in the first place. A much more common scenario is missile units evading cavalry. With the new collision changes you can see that missile units have a much harder time breaking free of cavalry. In this scenario we employed the same strategy as before, spam clicking the missile units to run and break free of the cavalry. But again you can see some getting caught behind and killed, which has caused the missile units to rout. Greater importance has been placed on the timing and placement of charges. Without a charge, units will come together much how they did before, in rigid battle lines. With a charge, however, units will break through the lines of infantry and become embedded in the other unit. This makes reforming your unit a lot more difficult the more entangled they are. However, depending on the success and strength of the charge, the enemy will receive a knockdown penalty, literally throwing them to the ground. This buys the player valuable time to pull out of the unit to avoid being entangled. This allows for lighter units to effectively charge heavier units, knocking them down and escaping before they can get back up. Skilled players will learn just how much time they need to get in and out to maximize damage with any unit, 
adding a new layer of strategic depth to the battlefield that rewards skilled and informed players. As a result of these changes, battle lines are much more common now as units push and pull against each other. PvE adventures are abound in Revelation Online. The world is full of mysteries, monsters, and rewards. Each dungeon is different. There are traps to avoid, challenges to complete, and there's always good old carnage. Those who wish to test themselves may venture into solo dungeons with no party members to rely on. Five player dungeons put your teamwork skills to the test. They have up to five levels of difficulty, with each level changing the rewards a lot. Mighty bosses roam the open world. Entire guilds battle each other just for the right to engage one of these bosses. Raids will test your guild's resilience. If you manage to complete a 10-player run, you can try it again on Hardcore Difficulty, or try the ultimate 20-player version and get epic rewards. The world of Revelation Online has much to offer to every kind of hero, whether they seek adventure, challenge, fame, or rewards. Hey guys, don't suck. Go, 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 Take control of the battleground. Summon creatures to give me power. I'm gonna go to class chat right afterwards. Go on, forest. Get a serve on Fallon. You know it. Margrave is at bridge, I'm summoning clash. Margrave is at bridge, then you're right behind you, Azza. He's going behind me. Margrave is at bridge? Yeah, take clash, definitely. Oh, a vote in here. Vote in here. They're going bridge. They're going bridge, guys. Yo, Sharnok. Vote in, jump down off the street. Yo, Sharnok. Trying to use his jump, get him. Get him, get him, get him. I'm slowing Bowden. Bowden's slowed right now. He's gonna pull. Tarnock is dead. I'm up here with him. I do wanna make a play? They have the power of banters though. Yeah, they do. Yeah, there's five fours. Let's, th let's try to make a play on them. It get him! Right off who's, of really who's really hurt? Who's really hurt? Who's dead? Who's dead? Who's dead? Who's nice shot, man. Nice. Our guys have health right now. Remember, they have a boomer here. Margaret's interrupted and slowed. Oh, I'm down. I'm dead. Good. The enemy gained full power. Their guardian will rampage. Ah, uh, just get out of there. We just need to defend. That's all we need to do right now. Just defend. My rival is rampaging. I'm on Bowden right now. I'm on Charnock. Who's dead? Charnock's really hurt in secret. Margaret's on me too. Margaret's on me too. I'm coming up There's secret. two on me. There's two on me. Charnock down. Nice. They're not going for the wound.
Artillery cruisers do their best work at extreme range, delivering deadly salvos from heavy weapon batteries. Think of the artillery cruiser as a sniper. The ship is big guns strapped onto a quick engine with almost no heavy armor, making it one of the most vulnerable flyers in the fleet. The artillery cruiser does its best work lurking in the outskirts of battle, spotting targets for teammates and taking out enemy vessels from afar. Bulky dreadnoughts are plumb targets for artillery cruisers. Lining up the perfect shot can be tricky, especially when quick ships like the Corvette manage to get too close for comfort. The Corvette is the smallest, most maneuverable ship in your arsenal. Dual front-mounted heavy autocannons and the Blink warp drive allow Corvette captains to make deadly, surgical hit-and-run strikes and wreak havoc on the enemy. Corvettes are scouts, running recon and delivering quick strikes. High speed and the warp jump ability make them perfect for hunting down pesky artillery cruisers. But Corvettes may fall prey to the massive firepower of the destroyer if they aren't careful. Destroyer-class ships hit the sweet spot between the massive Dreadnought and the agile Corvette. This all-around attack ship is loaded with firepower, making it the ultimate medium-range hunter. At range, destroyers should stay clear of the artillery cruiser's line of sight. A direct hit can prove devastating. In close quarter battles, destroyers are tough enough to handle their share of fire. Their role is to dart in and cut up the support craft, like the tactical cruiser, leaving larger, more dangerous ships without defenses. Tactical cruisers play a vital support role. They can provide on-the-spot repairs, even to themselves. And when they're caught in a corner or on the offensive, they are more than capable of causing some damage, especially against wily corvettes. As a mobile repair vessel, the tactical cruiser is the key to the survival of the fleet and is often seen in close proximity to other friendlies. Enemy destroyers will seek to cut the tactical cruiser's lifeline. Cruiser captains should wait for a destroyer escort before moving in to support a dreadnought. Oh